Okay, this one's going to be a bit of a a bits and bobs video, cut and redone over about probably a week or two's worth of, of tinkering. So hopefully you remember this little uh, lock that Chris Capoon sent me. Um, it's officially on the outside, it says it was a secure two lever. Inside we found one, two, three levers and two spacers, which I was surprised at, but okay, we'll take that. Um, so I cleaned it up, I sort of thought to myself, well, it'd be quite nice and a bit of practice for me to make a key for it and maybe send it back to Chris. So I thought, hey, that'd be a nice idea. I had a, had a quick dig around, looked at, looked at what I got. I mean, I've got a number of keys sat over here that would work. Um, yeah, it needs to be slightly bigger than that one. Possibly a. There we are, that fits in quite nicely. Um, probably about the right size. So let's have a look at that. Fits on the fits on the pin quite well. Goes around, catches the catches the the bolt mechanism perfectly well. So there we are. There's a, a blank. I can uh, I can make a key. Then I thought to myself, you know what would be really good <laughs> in my evil little vindictive brain? It'd be quite interesting to make this two lever, that's actually a three lever, a five lever. So I thought to myself, well, how hard can it be to make myself two extra levers? So that's what we're going to have a look at today. I've got a bit of brass. Um, now, I had this for, for, for another reason. Um, which I never really got round to, to completing. Um, but luckily, it's the same thickness as the levers. So if we have a quick look at this, and it's rather cold out here, so I'm hoping these, these work. These levers are just over two mil in thickness, and this brass is just under two mil. So, perfect. Um, <coughs> so, my plan is take one of these levers we'll mark it out put it onto here somewhere find a good angle to put it on clamp it in place draw around it cut it out um bit of fettling with the with the files get it to rough shape um and then decide what bitting we're going to cut into it now that really um depends a little bit on what I feel I want to give Chris, but also, I'm I'm umming and ahhing. We'll, we'll we'll decide on this one. I'm wondering whether I could put if I made them big enough. It doesn't have to be too you know one of those would be fine. I'm wondering whether I could put a little bit of a false gate in there. If I put a little sharp edge, slightly sharpen that edge up, that leading edge into a bit more of a point, um, and I put a a couple of little notches or at least a little notch into one or two of these. I could make myself a false gate. Um, so, we'll see how that goes. I'll mark something up. I'll start cutting it. I'll give you some updates as we go along. And, uh, yeah, I'll come back to you. Okay, so we've got roughed out markings. Um, obviously, what we're going to have here is a bigger cutout because I've had to go around the outside. So, that's great because I can cut to that line. And then there'll still be a little bit of give in the little bit of material to remove um, to bring myself to the right shape uh, and size as the originals. So what I'm going to do is start off with um, drilling uh, a central hole through the um, through the hinge pin. Probably two, maybe three holes through each of the um, through each of the the the, the bitting holes uh, slots and. Um, then we'll get to roughing out and cutting the main the main body out right before the battery runs out on this because it's nice and cold and so it's affecting the battery a bit that's where i am with respect to the drilling um so as you see the the three holes have combined with a little bit of wiggling of the drill into a nice slot uh, another slot here and then a, a single hole at the back here um, which i'm gonna have to enlarge a little bit to get over the hinge so next thing to do is a bit of filing. 
Okay, so we're sort of hang on, there, focus. Come on, focus. There we are. We're sort of into into rough rough uh, rectangular now, which is looking good. Um, just thought I I hadn't actually shown you some of the tools I'm using. Nothing very fancy. It's all hand tools. I've got a set of rather um, grubby old I think Draper or yeah Draper um, files. These are real rough ones but they come in some nice shapes um, and they give me enough to sort of clean up the edges um, and, and, and get the hole to a, a suitable shape. Um, I then have a range of um, files. I've got these, these are key warding files and I've got, I've got three of them here. Um, I've got a bastard, a, a first cut, oh, a fast bastard, a second cut and a smooth. Uh, and I use them for making keys with. Um, I also bought these, and they're lovely little uh, rectangular cut. Um, get it in focus again. Uh, rectangular um, warding files, and these again are in a in a, a bastard and a second uh, cut, I think. So, and these are lovely for 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 making these sort of things. They're they're just the right shape and size. So, um, on to the next step. Right, definitely the last video for today. Um, so far I reckon we're about three quarters of an hour or so in to uh, actually doing, doing the work. We're roughed out quite nicely. Let me just get the, um, see if it'll sit on there and bring us into focus. Uh, probably looks a bit better, doesn't it? Right, so we're roughed out on the edges. I've just literally junior hacksaw, take the edges off. As you can see, uh, my slots are all right. They're all about the right shape, right size little bit extras to tidy up once I've done the outside and got that to the right shape obviously there's a, a, a series of tidying up to do um, but the next two big items are to cut a small slot in here which will take the spring so you can see the spring fits into a tiny slot that's cut just here um, and then bends round now I've ordered some of those springs they're not easy to get hold of. Um, I found two places that would sell them, both of which uh, were wholesalers. Um, one of which required you to be trade to register. Um, luckily the other one sold them to me and I'm just waiting for them to come in the post. So, uh, yeah, that's where we are at the moment. I've done two of these. I did one previously to get a bit of practice. Uh, you can see not quite as tidy, the bottom one here. Um, but we're, we're, we're pretty much there. I'll get these two um, tidied up and um, we can then have a look at putting the springs in. Okay. Okay, we're back. I've had a bit of a play with um, this lot Chris Capoon sent me. Um, hopefully, if I've got the order of these videos correct, you'll have seen the start of the levers I was making, uh, and I'm going to show you the next step that I've made. So I managed to order um, some lever spring steel. Now these are approximately 0.6 of a mil thick, if I remember rightly. Yeah, about well, about 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of a mil thick, about 1.6 wide, and you get they come in lengths of um, uh, probably about 20 centimeters, I would suggest. So what have I done? Well, I've chopped a small chunk off. If you remember rightly, I'd sort of got to this stage, rough roughing out of the blank um, well I've moved on a bit this is now a pretty much fully formed lever um, what I have is a, probably a little bit of work still to do at the back end there but to be honest it doesn't matter it's more aesthetics then obviously the only real important bit is firstly to, to, to make sure it's got a nice smooth base so that the key works and take the, take the sharp edges off and then the important bit which is to decide what bitting I want to give it now, at the moment, I'm thinking, because I want to put some false gates into this, I'll f do another one very similar to this, um, with a large uh, top, uh, very low cut, which means that, that, that whoever tries to pick it has to go past the whole of that face, and in that face, I'll put a little notch. So, that's the plan. That's where I am at the moment. There's one lever, pretty much fully formed. All I've got to do now is tidy it up and do number two. Excellent. Okay, back to business. Um, 
I've now got, assuming it's cooled enough for me to pick it up, there we are, two levers, um, two brass levers, two new brass levers, um, all shaped perfectly fine, both with springs in, it's not the neatest work in the world, but it's uh, it's all it's all good, the springs are solid, soldered in there, um, all I need to do obviously is cut the bitting and then tidy up the edges. Okay, <clears throat> so back with two cut levers i'm going to put them on this board again hopefully you'll be able to see both of them um, please ignore the little bits of drawing that still sit on them so what you hopefully can see is firstly let me get my pointer firstly i've done them both um low cuts that was partly by design although actually by accident they've ended up to be the same depth cut which wasn't what i was planning but we live and learn. One thing that I'm hoping you do notice is the two false notches. One false notch just there, and one false notch just there. Now what I've also done to make the false notches a little bit more um, apparent, uh, or at least more easy to engage, is I filed down. Again, is this going to focus for me? Possibly, possibly not. Um, I've filed down the end of that, uh, of the, the bolt lug, um, to a, a bit of a chamfer, a bit of a point. And that now will engage with those false notches much more easily. So what I now need to do is put this all back together again. I've given, a, again, there's the insides. Uh, let me put a little light on this one. Why do I not, not have light on? Um, so I've cleaned the insides up again, a bit more wire wool. Um, let it dry off. I'm not going pristine. I don't think I'd ever get there without shot blast blasting. And to be honest, shot blasting would probably destroy at least one of the pins. So it works perfectly well as it is. So slightly um, odd order of filming because I'll have done this before I put the thing together and show you the film that I hopefully will show you uh, first. <laughs> but that's because I don't want Chris to see this before I send it back to him. So what we have are all the component parts laid out. We have the front, the back and the side, the shackle. We have the five levers now with the two brass ones that I created uh, and the three original. And we have the bolt sliding mechanism and we have the key that works. So we're going to put them together very quickly. That one goes in there. We're going to load up from the bottom. Now what I've found with these is it's much easier to put the spring in first. Make sure the bolt goes in the right place. Spring in first. Um, and then realign the bolt mechanism and the um, and the lever afterwards. So there's that. Shackle goes on. Obviously, don't forget the shackle. Okay, so going to try and put the uh, front cover on. What I've found is you can't belt it with a hammer. It's got to be pressed into place because otherwise the levers ping out. Um, now, you can get quite a lot in place just with a bit of manual force, but really I need to put it in the clamp. So I'll move, do that now, come back to you in a second. So we're back again. I've just pressed it on tightly with the, um, with the clamp. Just to prove it works, we are locked new key key goes in turns unlocks comes back again is locked so first rebuild of the uh um well of any lock really to send to someone send that off to chris uh, along with some others just to say thank you for sending me um the lovely little locks that he sent me a while ago that's me for today good night nostar no